right, this is going to be a 100% guide for the studio secretary. we were looking. Yes, I'm aware that it's an election year. Keep a hold of your hat, Counselor. Now is not the time to lose your nerve. It would appear that someone has hocked a rose gold wedding ring and matching engagement ring. Sound familiar? Dear Muller. Press the pawnbroker and see what you can find out. The address is 348 South Main Street. The Muller case goes before the grand jury next week, and the DA does not want any egg on his face. Then get out to the railroad depot on Santa Fe Avenue. We have another poor unfortunate found this morning beside a railroad line. <coughs> Forty-year-old white woman. Right, Skipper. All right. Another body, and dear to Muller's ring. The Emperor may soon have to come to terms with the fact that he's wearing no clothes. First part we're going to go to is the pawnbroker. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. How can I help you boys? No, 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 come to this window. Detectives Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. You have a rose gold wedding and engagement ring? David Bremner. Am I gonna get something for this pledge? Gave that bum money, now you guys are gonna leave me short. How much did you give him? Fifty bucks. Try another number. Twenty? Try ten. Feel lucky you're getting it. I have the rings right here. Alright. First, we're gonna look at this ring. And right here, find Does this out. Mark mean anything? 22 oh carat. Gives you an idea of the quality. And our next ring. We're gonna look right there to find out the jewelry mark? make. Maker's mark. Usually traceable. That one came from Hartfield's Jewelry down on Broadway. Thanks for the tip. What have you got on the guy who brought these in? Goes by the name of Percy B. Shelley. Gave an address. 15 Poland Street, London, Tulare County. And you give us a description of the man who pawned these rings? Not sure. Medium height, medium build, dark hair, I think. Sorry. He just had one of those forgettable faces. We'll be in touch, Mr. Bremner. All right. Next place will be the rail yard. You're behind the wheel. got to admit, this is looking hot. Anyone could pawn a ring. But if you take it along with all of the other indicators... Oh, Hugo Bowler was identified by the scene. ground keeper. He's our guy. Which is, is right over guy. here. He ran, for God's sake. And he always made... Park. Yeah. I look after all the rail depots. What have you got? The Negro, Nelson Gaines, called it in. I came down here to make sure him and the other guy, Jameson, stuck around. Jameson found the body? Something like that. Guy makes me sick. We'll talk to the coroner. Keep an eye on both of them. And the first.
first thing, we're gonna go to the dead body. And look at the neck, or the side of the head. Smell? Very good. There is the usual evacuation smell. But it appears she's been living rough for quite some time. Very strong smell of alcohol. Well, the autopsy will tell, but I would assume that she was inebriated. Alright. Our next and our last clue on the body. Oh, other hand. Will be the missing ring. Another missing ring. Certainly seems I've been swabbing a lot of bare fingers recently. Can you be more exact about the time of death? No later than 2 a.m. The state the body was in, a one or two hour window is the best I can do. And we get that automatically. Now we're going to check the handbag. Oh, we don't have any trouble. And the letter. Someone was trying to get her to come home. And the red ticket. We could go over to the lot and see what they know about her. That's going to be difficult, Cole. Keystone Studio lot closed back in 41. And the matchbook. Maybe find out about the bar. Piece of paper. This is a chit for personal items, not booze. It's not even worth investigating. Now, I'm gonna go over here and talk to this guy. This guy. Detective Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Can you tell me exactly what happened? We were shunting cars over to the main line when I saw this man here lying on top of this woman. The woman wasn't moving and seemed to be in a bad way. What time was this? About 7.30 this morning, sir. Thanks for your help. Have you given Patrolman Hart your details? I have. Thank you. You can go now. All right. And now we're going to go talk to... Well, let me find them. Maybe this guy? Detective yep. Phelps, LAPD Homicide. John Ferdinand Jameson, we need you to answer some questions, John. If you don't mind, I prefer Ferdinand. Don't push your luck, knucklehead. What were you doing to the body, Ferdinand? Are you sure you won't be upset? Try me, Ferdinand. I was kissing her. <laughs> it's not against the law. Shut up. There's no Take law your against beating it. like a man. Turn out your pockets, Ferdinand. We'll look online. at the lipstick. Is this yours, Ferdinand? No. I found it near her purse. I thought she could use some lipstick. Rusty, stop! Don't hit him. Interference with evidence. You uh, went through her purse? It wasn't like she needed it. I took a look. Truth. Did you take any money? It wasn't any to take. I found her lipstick in her matchbook over on the mat. Not much else. Discovery of victim's body. You found the body? Yes, I did. I work here. I was coming off shift and headed home. And doubt. Why didn't you report the body, Jameson? Do you know how this is going to look to a jury? A jury? What gives? I, I can tell that she was dead. I came through here about midnight last night. She wasn't here then. Let me belt him again. You're under arrest, Jameson. We'll see how this plays out. Until then, you can think a little on how you'd like to be treated if you were found dead. I'm telling you, it's not illegal. Me and some friends of mine... Fly. you get this sack of shit into a cell, I'll deal with him later. Sure, Rusty. All right. Last thing we got to do here is use the telephone.
Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, detective? I need an address on Levine's Liquor, closest store to the Santa Fe Avenue rail yard, if possible. Just a moment, detective. Closest door would be the one at 939 South Hope Street. Thank you. Alright. Now we're gonna go to Mensch's Bar. I'm busy here, Phelps. Yeah, well, it's time to go. I'm busy here, Phelps. It's time to go. Stay out of my way and I will stay out of yours. Everybody's happy. You know the way. You can drive. It's about damn time. to ask you some questions concerning Evelyn Summers. I'm Walter Mensch. Evelyn Summers? What is it now? You knew Evelyn? As well as I wanted to know Evelyn. She's a pain in the ass, always coming in here, cadging drinks, never had any money. She was in just a couple of nights ago. Did she ever tell you where she was staying? I don't know. I think she was living rough. She had that kind of stunk about her. Who did she drink with? A bunch of these guys. Ask around. All right, we're going to go here and What's question this guy. Grosvenor McCaffrey. Mind if I ask you some questions, Mr. McCaffrey? I'm just a starving writer, detective. What do you want to ask about? Evelyn Summers and why she was found beaten and strangled in the rail depot on Santa Fe. Okay. I see your point. How well did you know her? I can't say that I knew her. It was more like I was aware of her. Last contact with victim. Did you see Evelyn last night? No. I uh, was at home. Writing. Doubt. Do you want to get dragged into this, McCaffrey? Do you want us to get interested in you? She hung out with this powder puff, James Tiernan. They haunted the public library together. How well do you know James Tiernan? I know he works some kind of plebeian job at Rawlings Bowling Alley. Rawlings? I know that place, corner of 9th and Grand. A lot of cops pulled there on Tuesday nights. Criminal history. Do you have a criminal record, Mr. McCaffrey? Nothing serious. I've had a few skirmishes. Doubt. Do you want to save me some time, or do you want me to look up your file? Industrial disputes, strikes, workers' rights, that kind of thing. A regular fifth columnist. Nice to meet you, comrade. Thank you for the information, Mr. McCaffrey. Okay, our next place to go is... Levine's Liquor Store. You can drive. We have a problem. He 
She's joking, Mr. Robbins. She kept a bed here. All right. I probably shouldn't have let her. An alcoholic and a liquor. Here. Never gonna work out, was it? We'll look, look at the around. book. Evelyn was reading Aristotle. Evelyn wasn't stupid. The stupid thing about her was and we'll open it up. And she was borrowing books from Grosvenor McCaffrey. And there's a photograph here. She wasn't always such a loner. A photograph somewhere around here. There's a bowling pin. Says Rawlings bowling on it. Rawlings bowling alley. Maybe Evelyn did something other than drink in her spare time. A dust I tag. Evelyn hadn't held down a job for quite some time before she was killed. When exactly some kind of trophy. Of pictures. Looks years. like an Emmy. She worked in legal copyrights for music. And another photograph right here. And that's everything for here. Now we gotta go interrogate the owner. Where did he run off to? Contact with victim. We're trying to account for Evelyn's movements yesterday. She came by in the morning. A social visit to pick up some of her things. She had a couple of bucks and bought a quart of rye. Truth. Any idea where the money came from? She didn't mention it. But she did say the booze was a present for a boy. She said they had been fighting and she had to make it up to him. Relationship with victim. Are you and Evelyn close, Mr. Robin? How many people will be sad she's gone? I'll be one of the few. Truth? I got the impression that Evelyn had been sleeping rough of late. It became difficult for me to have her stay here. Her mother was trying to get her back on the straight and narrow. She's old now. And to be honest, you have to have a good reason to want to get back on. Knowledge of McCaffrey. Do you know a friend of Evelyn's by the name of McCaffrey? Not personally. Doubt. We're struggling for leads, Robbins. Did she know McCaffrey? She idolized him. From what I gather, the feeling was far from mutual. He seems to peddle a revolutionary stance, fixing the ills of society. You could see how it would appeal to down and outs like Evelyn. Thanks for your help, Mr. Robbins. No problem. Hey. I'd like to make arrangements for the funeral. You think I could get in touch with Evelyn's mother? Put in a call to the watch commander at Central Station, Mr. Robbins. He'll be trying to reach the next of kin. Thanks. Get the guy, huh? Evelyn never hurt anybody. Right. Now we're done here. What do you think's wrong with him, Doc? Oops, wrong way. Now, we're going to go back to Mensch's bar. And we have to drive ourselves, so... We should keep this developing with the rims under our hat. We're all on the same team, Rusty. Chain of command, Phelps. The skipper will decide who needs to know. You got it? I get it, Rusty. I just don't like it. Car 11 King, Car 11 King, KGPL. 11 King. A message from Captain Donnelly returned We're going to wait for this message real quick to return to the Central Station.
But we're not the returning way. there first. We're going to the bar first. The rage that those goddamn Chinese want to sell the relief food that we're Even sending. Even though it changed our yeah, yeah, right about that location. We're going people to are the starving. Bar. They can't do that. Want to sell the food? Right fund the here. civil war against the communists. Really? Guess that's okay then. Armies can't fight without. We're gonna talk to this guy again. Relationship with victim you again? You say you barely knew Evelyn? Yes, that is correct. And why? You're lying, McCaffrey. You look down your nose at Evelyn, but you knew her, and you have some idea of what happened. I hope you're holding aces. I'm telling you again. I barely knew the woman. And we are going to choose the book. Why would you lend her your book on metaphysics if you only knew her in passing? It was more than that. A renaissance man like yourself lending his books to his acolytes. She hounded me about that goddamn book. And then she lifts it from my apartment and lies to my face that she didn't take it. As if she could even comprehend any of it. I saw her go into a hotel with Tiernan last night. They had booze in a paper bag. He's your man. Now we can go to the police station. Can you drive to this one? Boy, howdy. Downstairs with Ray Pinker and Carruthers. I say we bust in there. Seems like a decent guy. What's the coroner says can take a leap of each And there we go. Now we can leave. We got our orders. Back of the Summers case. Get an address from the cap or we'll blow the bar. I'll meet you outside. And we need to use the telephone real quick. Operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. Phelps, batch 1247. How could I help, detective? I need an address for a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Grosvenor McCaffrey. Apartment 6, 126 Yale Street, between Ord and Alpine. Thanks for your help. Now, we need to go to... Rawlings Bowling Alley. You can drive. Let me pose a question. Pen, what you got? Works here by the name of Tiernan. Sure we do. He's a pin setter. 
clears the jams, works the gutters. Go right in. He'll be hopping around the lanes toward the back. He's a nice boy. Thanks, ma'am. Let's go get him. He's right there, and as you can see, he is running. So we are going to chase him. Tiernan! LAPD! There! What are you waiting for? Get after it! We might go faster if we weren't carrying the extra weight. True to that. These are flashy cars to be parked outside a bowling alley. The lanes attract a fast-living individual with money to burn. Or a middle-aged individual with the need to feel virile. Whoa, look out Don't there, Don't put sleep on me. Get me back in close. Another runner. At least we've got a suspect. Why do they oh, always shit. run? I'm sure we've got the wrong person in more than one of these homicides, but they always seem to lamb it. You know, your theories are not airtight by any means. Hit him, Cole! Spit him out! How about you shoot his tires out? If this isn't the killer, we can at least get him for reckless endangerment. That's unless he runs into a wall and saves us all the trouble. This car should be breaking down. Oh, he's square. Let's hope the people see him in time to get out of the way. Try not to damage property. They run because someone's setting them up because they feel like the deck is stacked against them. Yeah, don't make up ridiculous stories for them, detective. Leave that to the perp's imagination. I'll try to shoot out his tires. Wish me luck. Whoa, looks like they're going into the tunnels. God damn it, he'll kill himself. All right, as long as them kill us, I'm okay with it. We're gonna get out and apprehend them. Give it up, LAPD! Caffrey's apartment. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. real quick. Oh, come on. Apartment 6, okay. McCaffrey's in apartment 6. I'd say it ties McCaffrey to the scene. Book. I doubt it. Nothing, actually. Another book. Nothing again, but right here. Got a tire iron. He said he was at home. He said he didn't know her. And we have the book. Let's see Carruthers argue his way out of this one. Is that 
Drunk and in command of a carrier. She tells you that he's on the roof. So that's where we're gonna go. Isn't that the cop who caught the guy that was dead? He's going to run. I'm going to chase him. Of course, he runs a million times faster than we do. You a runner, McCaffrey? Stay and fight the good fight. Ooh, look at those bad textures. Apparently, the game can't load properly on the 360. Just a bunch of freezing problems constantly. Hopefully we can catch him eventually. Right here. Tackle his ass. McCaffrey, you're under arrest on suspicion of murdering Evelyn Summers. Alright. We need to get downtown and wrap this thing up. Well, down. you can drive. You should know better. Set him up. I don't think that asshole Jameson could have done it, do you? It's a well, nice car. What's that dahlia fight? How do you know that McCaffrey didn't do the dog? We have a list of over 200 suspects. His name was never on it. Can I please skip this? Thank you. Why did you run, Tiernan? I was the last one to see Evelyn that night. I knew you would think it was me. Relationship with victim. Can you describe your relationship with Evelyn? I, I barely knew Evelyn. Lie. Keep lying to me and I'll have you charged and in front of a grand jury before your feet touch the ground. <laughs> How can you possibly prove Evelyn and I were more than friends? And victim last scene. McCaffrey gave you up, Tiernan. He says he saw you go into your hotel with Evelyn. I met Evelyn at the public library. We would read for a while and then go for a drink. Last night we went back to my hotel room and had some more to drink. I, I must have passed out. I woke up and she was gone. What time was this? Around midnight, maybe later. And there's no one who can confirm this? No. There isn't. I knew you wouldn't believe me. Victim's book found. Aristotle's Metaphysics. The book that belonged to McCaffrey. McCaffrey saw her looking at her once and laughed in her face. And you're saying Evelyn stole it. She wanted something of his. Doubt. We either hang this on you or McCaffrey. You better give us something. Well, McCaffrey's been in trouble with the law before. I mean, he always makes out it was some kind of labor dispute. But, you know, I'm not so sure. Alibi for James. You and Evelyn were drinking together last night. And she had no other place to stay. I don't know what happened last night. I, I don't remember. Lie. You're lying, Tiernan. You've been fighting with her. You fought, and you... I'm not lying! She got up and left! That was it! <laughs> well, calm down there, boy. Liquor purchase... She left, but she came back. She bought you a I'm not whiskey. lying! She got the bill left! You're in deep trouble, buddy. Mm -hmm. She said she loved me. She wanted to care for me. She would never stop talking about McCaffrey. 
<laughs> McCaffrey was a writer, and McCaffrey was a hero. McCaffrey cared for the little guy. Did you kill her, Tiernan? I might as well have. I kicked her out. She had nowhere to go. Access to Do murder you know weapon. Car, no, I don't. Hmm. Have access to a lug wrench? Well, we use a lot of them to clear jams in the pin setting machines. Doubt. Coroner's report says that Evelyn was killed with a wrench. I think you did it and then planted the evidence at McCaffrey's apartment for us to find. We went to his apartment. McCaffrey was up on the roof. Evelyn stole the book. <laughs> McCaffrey went crazy when he found out. He said, he said he would put her out of her misery. He can be very cruel. We're not going to charge him. Evelyn was missing a ring from her right hand. That's strange. She always wore it. A uh, big black circular disc with a white E in the middle. It was made from an old typewriter key, present from the prop department at her old movie studio. We're going to talk to McCaffrey. You need to think about what you've told us, Tierney. Yep. You're not in the clear. Now we're going to interview room two. And I don't know where it is. I always get lost. Oof. The thing was, it was a real nice guy. Room two is down here. Find it, Jesus. Interview room two is right here. You ready to answer some questions? You think I have all the answers? People who run from the police usually have something to hide. Touche, detective. Let's see where this takes us. Alibi for McCaffrey. Someone died sometime around midnight. Remind me, where were you? I was at home, writing. I'm working on a manuscript. Lie? You're lying, McCaffrey. You were out at the rail yard. And what do you have that proves I was there? Torn letter. How about half of Augusta Summer's last correspondence with her daughter? What are you talking about? After you were done beating Evelyn, you searched her and found her mother's letter. That old lady's anguish amused you. I know nothing about a letter or Evelyn's goddamn mother. So what was it doing on your writing desk? I don't know, but if I didn't put it there, somebody else did. Try exercising your powers of deduction on that. Access to tire iron. We found the lug wrench that Evelyn was battered with in your apartment, and the note from her mother, and your blood-stained clothing. We have you cold, McCaffrey. You think if I could be bothered to murder Evelyn Summers, I would be stupid enough to leave the evidence in my apartment? Lie. I don't believe you, Grosvenor. The evidence says that you killed her. You can prove that I wanted to kill Evelyn? Tiernan's accusation. Tiernan is prepared to testify that you threatened Evelyn's life in his presence. Self-preservation. That's understandable. Okay, I'll level with you. Tiernan killed Evelyn. He came to me for help. I listened to him, and he explained why he did it. Tiernan went to you for help. You expect me to buy that? That's how it went down. I told him he made a terrible mistake, but he would be throwing his life away if he went to the cops. I took his things and told him I would dispose of them. But you didn't. Speak to Tiernan. He'll give it up. All right. You're the reason brothers and sisters didn't oh, Well, thanks for shutting the door in my face. We got to use the telephone real quick. Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. Phelps, batch 1247. How could I help, detective? I need the jacket on a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Just a moment, detective. McCaffrey was formerly under surveillance by the Red Squad. Convictions for petty theft. Dishonorable discharge from the Army during training. 
screaming at Syracuse, assault on a local woman. Says he almost beat the woman to death. Thank you. Now we gotta go back to interview room one. Which is back here. Jeez. This guy was looking for his own mother after I'd sweat. You spoken to McCaffrey? I can go, it's all been cleared up. Not quite. We have one more question we need to ask, James. Then I think we will be done. Sure. Go ahead. Events prior to murder. So Evelyn passed out and you walked out. What happened next? I woke up in the morning. Mary hung over. I thought Evelyn would have come back. Lie? I know you're lying, James. You went out looking for her. Tell me what really happened. I don't know what you're talking about. How, how can you say I wasn't in that hotel room? Mac. McCaffrey's accusation. You wound up at McCaffrey's. You were still incredibly drunk. You passed out on his floor. It's time to tell me what really happened. McCaffrey woke me up this morning. And he showed me the lug wrench and the letter and the box. And he said I came in with him last night. He said that I killed Evelyn. And that it was all over the radio. And that he would protect me. And I don't know, Detective, for the life of me, I can't remember a goddamn thing. I was angry with her. Really angry. I could have done it. It wasn't me. We are not going to charge him. Wait here. We're gonna run down back to <sighs> Jesus. We just get lost in this place like a friggin' maze. Need a drink. I got the jitters again. Interview room two. Military service. In the war? Yes, I was. Seeing the things that I saw, it changes a man. I came back here determined to change things. All I wanted was a pen and an opportunity to speak out. You told us before that you had only minor run-ins with the police. You didn't mention petty theft. I've never been in trouble for violence. That's the salient point here, isn't it? Why? You're lying, McCaffrey. You have a history of violence towards women. How do you turn a couple parking tickets in a petty theft misdemeanor into an assault charge? McCaffrey's criminal record. We know all about you and your dishonorable discharge. Beating some poor woman near to death in Syracuse. You've never been in combat, McCaffrey. Your whole life is a fraud. She was a goddamn peasant whore! She tried to steal from my wallet. I could have fought for this country! I could have... You beat her because she stole from you. Because she tried to outsmart you. The ignorant audacity of the bitch! What is a man supposed to do? Sit there and take it? How is a man supposed to call himself a man? And Evelyn Summers, a poor, drunken nobody, stole your book. And she got what was coming to her! And charge him. Jeffrey, I'm charging you with the murder of Evelyn Summers. She was a sad lady who never hurt anyone except herself. I hope God finds a way to forgive you. Congratulations, boys. You bagged the fine catch. Another red to boot. Grant. Now, I want you to put this business about a repeat offender out of your mind. This McCaffrey creature shows no remorse. And neither will the grand jury. You would have to walk a long mile to find a better candidate for an unmarked plot in the prison graveyard. And... Five stars. 